All right, I'm going to show you replacing the parking brake shoes on a 2007 through 2017 Toyota Camry, Avalon, and Lexus ES350. Now, there is a way to do it by removing the shoes from around the wheel, uh, yeah, the wheel hub, I guess you call it. Definitely the hub. However, I'm going to do it by the book, and then I'm going to also emphasize some details because they just say, like, remove this or remove that. And removing it isn't as simple as picking it up from one place and putting it in another. <laughs> so, let's get the wheel off. All right, with the new um, parking shoes, it might not turn as freely. Uh, you don't have to worry about that too much. All right, I'll put a jack stand underneath here just to be safe. It's Jacking this car up is kind of tricky. You need to be real careful. I have it on the foundation for the forward mount of the trailing arm. Then I'm going to put the jack stand underneath the wheel carrier. So just be very careful of your jacking points. All right, I'm going to take the caliper off. Both the caliper and the caliper mounting bracket are 14 millimeter. Also note there's grease on the end of it. So they are lubed and all my Volvo, Mercedes, and BMW videos, I say don't lube them because the factory doesn't lube them. Well, this is, I am 100% certain this is factory, that it's never been uh, removed since manufacturing date, so um, Toyota loops it at the factory. Also note that the bottom one is different from the top one. Notice the bottom one has that uh, rubber slash plastic end to it. The top one does not. So when you do lube it up, just be careful because you don't really want to have too much lubricant. It's a dead end where these bolts go. There's not an open end on the other side. So if you pack too much grease in there, you're going to have a problem. So the book tells you to compress the piston with a C-clamp. And they show you how to do it. And actually, it works great. I have all kinds of fancy little caliper compression tools, but I'm going to show you how the book describes it, and it works great. Great. Clamp on the piston end over here near the bleeder. Tighten it down. Piston compressed. Super easy. See how it's compressed flat all the way down? No problems. All right, now we just hang the caliper up and out of the way. Pads off if you want. Um, also, if you're changing pads, uh, Toyota highly recommends that you keep the original factory shims and put them on the new pads. Even if the pads come with shims, uh, you really want to reuse the factory originals. That's uh, extremely important, actually. So, And also the squealer. Some pads, I know some aftermarket pads don't come with a squealer. Just pop that off and put it on the aftermarket pads. Okay, caliper mounting bracket. Caliper mounting bracket off. All right, I don't need it, but if you do, it's M8 by 125. We'll go in here, and you're going to want two bolts, not one. And M8 by 125, put them in here. Tighten them down a little bit at a time. And mine's already loose. That's why I'm doing it by hand. But if you need a 
socket or something and that'll take it off. Sometimes uh, it sticks to the parking brake you know like if you're replacing the rotor for a brake job. Okay here's where the fun starts. You can get back in here and work it out and get the pads off and the new ones on and get it all back together without removing the hub but the book says remove the hub it's uh, 14 millimeter you're gonna have to line up the holes here with the bolts and get on in there and uh, take out the four bolts so let me do that all right they're easy enough to get out and you can always just take the uh, Oops, you can always just take the uh, wheel bearing off and uh, get them out that way too. But you can go into the side, you know, they just come right out. Again, there are plenty of ways to get it off. No bounce hammer. You can move the uh, parking brake shoe off to the side and that'll give you access to the side of the <coughs> wheel bearing assembly wheel bearing hub assembly and you can maybe put a punch in there or even a wedge and drive it in there and get it out that way okay so before I take the uh, wheel hub off for of there I'm going to disconnect the speed sensor in the back and I'm going to uh, loosen the wiring couple 10 millimeter bolts get that out of the way alright let me show you the speed sensor how to take it off I hooked it back up I'm gonna I have an egg crate right here so I'm going to set it on the egg crate and show you how to take the sensor off. Alright, there's a little pin right here. Here's the outside edge. Go between the outside edge and the pin. Just kind of push it back with a screwdriver and it should just uh, pop right off. Yeah, see how it's popping right off for me? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Alright, they say remove wheel bearing, but what they don't tell you is the whole thing's going to come off because the wheel bearing is resting in here on the wheel carrier so it's gonna come off so you know the splash guard could be glued to the, to here it wasn't in my case um, by glued I mean rust uh, you still have the parking brake cable that's extremely difficult to remove uh, when it's assembled like this so if you do get the wheel bearing off everything's gonna fall off in my case the whole assembly came off so now I'm gonna take it apart where it sits on the egg crate okay so one trick I came up with to get this uh, hub off if it's uh, welded on there with rust is to put a couple of the bolts back in I put in these two corners right here see it's loose and then I can move the uh, parking brake pads out of the way I just pull on them a little bit and uh, put my punch down there or my wedge but you don't want to hit on the ears of the wheel bearing that's not good you break that off you'll be unhappy I assure you all right I'll take my bolts out see if I got it uh, let me prepare to catch it and we're out out it comes. Now, all of the manuals, all of them, I read three of them, Toyota, um, Haynes, what was the other one, was it Clinton? They were all identical, they all copied each other, so they all copied Toyota. Anyway, all the pictures show it mounted to do the work. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you can get three of the screws back in all the way. One of them won't go in all the way. Uh, it's not designed to. But anyway, we can uh, do that or not. Uh, you can easily take it apart from here. Uh, this spacer here is marked uh, left. The other one's marked right. Your uh, parking brake actuator bar here uh, where this is cable is hooked up that's also marked left and right and we will take apart the bottom and the top first let's get these out uh, 
You should always buy a hardware kit just in case uh, you find something damaged or you damage something or if you don't like something you want new. Uh, I like to keep as many of the original parts as I can unless of course you buy genuine Toyota and replace it with genuine Toyota. So now I'm going to disassemble it completely um, and again I could bolt it back up like the manual says. All right, and we'll take our adjuster out. I like to uh, leave it at its setting. I measured the width, it was like uh, 1.906 inches when I measured it on the other side. Let's see what this one is. All right, 1.901, so we'll just start taking it apart. It's all falling apart. Okay. Uh, can you see that? It's marked L for left. I'll clean all this up. The uh, toughest part is uh, you got to spread this out, shoot it off of there. There's a washer underneath it. Uh, and then put the new one on. Uh, also, <clears throat> I'm going to take off all this anti-seize and do something else. I mean, they say to lubricate at these points right here. There's like, you'll see little bumps off of the flat. And so it's a visual indication of where the uh, uh, lubrication points are. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different. Now you can take this off, you can compress the spring and lift it up out of the way. It's pretty easy. I use vice grips. So I use my vice grips. It's not too bad. I uh, just put it on there enough to uh, pull it out of the way and then you unhook it. Not too difficult. Then we can do this work on the bench where I replace it. The two 10 millimeter bolts out. I'm going to move the uh, parking brake cable out of the way. I'm going to take my bolts out, take the pan off, clean it up, start uh, the rust removal process. All right, so you can see how thick it is in here. Um, it is way thicker than the step over here. Let me zoom in. All right, thickness one, thickness two, wheel bearing thickness. So there's plenty, plenty for it to stick to. There's a left. There's a left. But these two pieces don't come apart, at least not that I know of. Left. Uh, I'm only going to replace the springs. I'm going to replace the caps. I like the replacement ones better. Um, the Belleville washer is a lot bigger and nicer than the original. And of course you have to replace this clip because the last thing you want is to have it fatigue on you when you squeeze it back together. And the bottom spring and I messed up the pin, the straight pin. There's two pins. One's bent, one's straight. So, that is that. Yeah, let's see if I can get this off on camera. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll use right side footage. It's actually very soft. So, that's another reason to replace it. Yeah, we got a bigger boat. There we go. This guy just comes right off. See, I like the replacement better. All right, so, you know, if you take them both apart at the same time, they are marked left and right, as I just said. All right, so here are the new pads. Now, I have seen some where this pin is not sold with the pads, uh, with the shoes, I'm sorry. 
So you may have to uh, remove the pin from the shoe and put it in the new one. Let's see. Yeah, see there's a hole for it, uh, but the other side doesn't have one. So anyway, so what you'd have to do is drive out the original and put it in the new if you find yourself in that situation. Alright, I put some lubricant on the uh, contact area, the metal to metal. Just, uh, there wasn't any from the factory, but there is now from my installation. Installation. Alright, we'll put our Belleville wash on there. Uh, I like it curved up. It's easier to get the uh, pin on there. And I'll just press it in place and then squeeze it down tight. Also, in case you didn't notice, uh, I've recently learned that this uh, purple that I've used for a while, uh, some rubbers are susceptible to it. So I bought the one that is uh, not susceptible to any rubber, whether it's Boina N or Vinton or whatever the other ones are. So I'm trying to use this up so you'll see purple and orange where the orange is going to be on the disc brakes and the purple is going to be everywhere else. All right, there's the setup. Let's see if I can capture it, even though the camera is in the way. The tripod, yep, good job. All right, remember, if at first you don't succeed, quit. All right, be sure and get it all the way on before you squeeze it down and close it up. No cheating. All right, make sure it'll pass QC inspection. All right, I'm cleaning parts and I just wanted to point out that there are two ends to the boot. There's a wide end and a narrow end. The wide end goes on the caliper mounting bracket. You can go ahead and mount that first. No matter what you do, it's going to wipe the guide pin, slide pin, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, so when you put lubricant on it, it's only going to be a very thin coat after it goes through the boot. Alright, seems like uh, Daddy Long Legs there didn't realize that the tape was very sticky. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so what I decided to do uh, is use this uh, very strong tape. Um, it's very sticky. The high strength is in the adhesive on the back. Uh, and I'm going to do that in place of uh, lubricant like anti-seize. So that's what the book calls for. You put anti-seize here on these uh, humps on this plate here. And then the middle to middle contact has uh, lubricant. I chose uh, to tape it over. All right, for reassembly, first things first is the cable to the brake and that's going to restrict our movement and everything right out the gate and unfortunately that is the first thing on so it's going to come through here I got two 10 millimeter bolts to hold it in place so let's do that okay <clears throat> the end of the exterior cable has a piece on it let's see if I'm zoomed in too far here and that is keyed so you put the front in and the back comes up and it holds itself in place then you can start the screws and tighten them down next we'll retract the spring and hook on our shoe actuation lever now I'm zoomed in too much there we go so we'll hook on the end here it's pretty simple. So it's not that difficult. <clears throat> I have the vice grips spread apart a little bit. Just need to grab the spring enough just to hold it. Then you compress it back. It's not that difficult. One hand, one person. That gave enough gap to hook on the 
actuation lever pretty easy all right next I'm gonna tape the pin in place uh, I didn't want to do it first because I thought it might get knocked out of the way uh, so you want this notch facing forward since it's the left side of the vehicle so you know it'll it'll be in there like that and that allows the actuator arm movement when it's pulled forward that's what that is so there it is in position all right next we'll put the uh, parking brake hold down spring into position we have the first piece that goes in is this piece that b that's bent goes in the hole and over top of the pin then the spring and the cap all right the spring and the cap now hopefully I can show you this without any problems because I want to show you that you can do this without putting your finger behind the splash guard but it can be done the spring is not that powerful that you can't compress it all the way down and rotate it uh, you may have to touch the back here to get it to line up but that's about it you don't have to keep your finger on the back if you use the tape method that uh, that I do all right the camera angles real bad so I had to stage this this there's the tape on the straight pin and again it's just enough to hold it in place uh, you really don't need your finger on it you're not going to push on it so there's the pin held in place and we'll just put on the shoe all right next we put on the spring goes on there like that uh, it's actually kind of tough to get it on both of them that's why I like to do it when they're apart like this uh, for some reason once you get one in the other one doesn't want to go in uh, it's craziness and uh, you can't really see what I'm doing my hands gonna be in the way but I have the spring lifted up in the air and then I'm just gonna hook on the side there there are hooks on both sides it goes on the inside you know the most difficult side to hook it onto. so I have it hooked on both pieces and I'll just pull this around and set it up accordingly put the spring in place again same thing our anchor washer for lack of a better word the hook goes in the hole then the spring and then the cap put on correctly all right you know your springs are in place and set correctly when you can get to the top cap flush not cocked off to the side make sure you're at the top up here that you're in place touching the bottom two will be touching it'll be spread apart by the uh, uh, adjustment device next I'm gonna put the spacer in at the top uh, the wide side is going to go where the two pieces are the shoe and the park and brake actuator and the narrow side is gonna go to the front it's gonna be arched in such a way that it matches the inside of the circle here the spring only goes on one side so this piece actually pushes the parking brake actuation lever back so this is always fun too next I like to put in the springs the springs go in the small hole over here and then the hook goes on the top of the brake shoe holder all right I really don't think it matters which side you do first however for the second spring you really have to hold the uh, pads together see how it kind of springs back if you do this side first the other side will spring out 
and you need to make sure everything is lined up and put to put together correctly I didn't film it because my hand would be in the way but it really was not too difficult the springs weren't so freaking crazy powerful that you know you need to be he-man of the universe in order to put them on there it's not too bad alright make sure everything's okay uh, make sure that the bracket is in the slots correctly make sure your spring is not caught or bound and now we can uh, work on the bottom all right your adjuster is greased up with factory grease you can clean it out and put in new or not same thing on this end you can see some dirt in there I'm gonna clean it up a little bit again I think my hands are gonna be in the way here but uh, we need to spread this far enough apart to get this in it's not too bad there we go uh, you know you have it in backwards if this uh, star adjuster doesn't fit because the bottom of the shoes if I put it in backwards it'll actually be on the metal of the shoe uh, so the way it goes is the dummy end goes forward and the threaded adjusting end that will uh, come in and out when you turn the star wheel uh, is on the uh, back side all right if you want before you mount it especially since I have it all gooped up and all I do is spread goop all over the place if I mounted it temporarily to test the drum you can test your drum to make sure it fits and if it doesn't slide right on you can adjust it you can uh, close it up because if you're replacing them odds are they're worn <laughs> uh, unless you've never ever used them in the life of the car uh, so you can uh, close them up or open them up whatever uh, so that the drum fits on there before you even put it on the vehicle all right so let me stage this for you um, if you need to expand it you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to lift up on it so you know lifting up on it will expand it and if you stick your screwdriver through the hole here of course you won't be able to see anything and you push it down like this that will contract it so I'm gonna contract it all the way just to show you that that gap right there is closing and then I'm gonna adjust it so that it's barely touching or barely not touching the inside of the drum alright next is mounting and that is really fun because you have four components you have the wheel carrier you have the parking brake assembly and yeah parking brake assembly and you have the wheel bearing and you have the bolt so that's always fun also notice that it's not symmetrical and you can tell how it goes because the um, speed sensor plug is going to go in that hole right there so you need to orient this correctly and it looks like the wide part is on top the narrow is on the bottom and the speed sensor needs to go through there so fun stuff all right I have my bolt in place right here and we're gonna screw it in right here as soon as I set it up get it in the position make sure I don't cross thread anything and snug it up a little bit and then I'll get all four started before I tighten anyone down all right I'm actually gonna film my fun thought about just showing you when it was already on but I'm not going to I'm gonna 
can show you that it can be done. All right. On to the next one. Two down, two to go. Now I'll stop. All right, the book says torque value 59 foot pounds and for 2012 and later models 44 foot pounds. I don't know why. I know I have an extension and that changes the value, but we're not torquing down the head of a nuclear reactor. Yeah, I'm working on the left side. All right. Alright, before putting the drum on, we need to get our hub orientation correct. Alright, and that means that, alright, you need one of these holes down at the bottom. That's your adjuster. Then you need it solid on both sides. Those are your bolt holes if you need to take your drum off. Then you need this, which is your adjuster on the bottom so it's going to go on there like this all right do any adjusting and uh, put your plug in next our caliper mounting bracket pads remember if you're changing the pads use the OEM uh, shims to uh, replace whatever's on the pads that you buy if it's Toyota there actually will be missing there might be an inner pad and you have to put the uh, metal uh, contact pad in place but anyway just uh, be aware of your pads put them back on the way they were alright the inner pad on both sides the squealer goes on the bottom alright next is the caliper Remember the uh, caliper slide pin uh, or guide pin uh, with the uh, rubber slider on there? That goes on the bottom. All right, the caliper mounting pin, the slider uh, that goes on top is solid. And I did lubricate it, but the boot is so tight on that end, it's basically going to wipe it all off. But that's okay. Now, both on the top and the bottom, you want to make sure your boot is on there correctly. You didn't pinch it, didn't cock it to the side. We'll tighten these down. Of course, any time after you mount your wheel bearing hub assembly, you can plug in your speed sensor. However, I'd like to point out if you disconnected the lines to give you freedom of movement that you just basically um, follow the line from the body to the end and set your uh, guides first and plug it in last. And you do that to make sure that everything's, you know, routed correctly. No interference, it's not twisted, it'll just plug right in. All 
All right, I'm gonna clear my tools, mount the tire, pump the brakes, and go for a test ride. Thank you for watching.